morning. Hope everyone had a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and I'm delighted you could join me for what I'm going to call an early Christmas present, a visit from Governor Charlie Baker, the governor of Massachusetts. Welcome, Governor. Hey, John. How are you? Good to have you here. Happy, happy, th here. happy Thanksgiving. And the same to you. Holidays to you and yours. Yep. So you got a little bit of an early holiday gift the other day. I don't know if you'd call it a gift. Uh, the Globe reported that Newton Mayor Seti Warren, who's announced he's not running for re-election as mayor, is fundraising for a run against you in 2018. He's hired John Walsh, one of the key architects of uh, Deval Patrick's victory over you in 2010. Uh, what recommends you to the voters over Mayor Warren? You know, I'm just going to concentrate on my day job, which is what I've been doing for the past two years. It's a job that I really enjoy. And, uh, and I think, frankly, that uh, people appreciate the fact that that really has been our focus as an administration. I hear that all the time when I'm out and about, that, uh, that the fact that we just really seem to want to focus on the work is something that people appreciate, especially given the political season that just ended. And, uh, and, and the lieutenant governor and I have talked about the fact that at some point down the road we'll get into that conversation about what's next for us. But for the time being, we're just going to focus on our day job. What do you and, think? And the rest of the stuff can sort of happen as it, as it might. What do you think of City Warren? Well, I've, known, I've, uh, I've worked with him on some issues, uh, just as our administration has worked closely with uh, a lot of mayors and municipal officials on economic development projects and housing projects and uh, modernization legislation and on our community compact program, which now has about 250 communities involved. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm just going to focus on the day job. Well, just to be clear, are you a candidate for re-election? The lieutenant governor and I are going to talk about that sometime next year. Um, Is there any chance you won't run? You never know in this business, right? But I would say that, uh, that she and I have a big agenda. We've been pursuing it aggressively. And, and I guess what I would say is as long as I think we have um, something to offer to the people and to the voters in Massachusetts, it's certainly going to be something we consider. You're not expecting a call from the Trump transition team, I take it. Like I said, I'm going to focus on my day job. Okay, that's a no for those of you following along at home. So what did you learn from the pasting you took on question two, the lifting of the charter school cap, the ballot question? Well, first of all, I was, uh, I was pleased to support making sure that uh, we do everything we can to make sure vote, uh, families here in the Commonwealth of Mass, wherever you live, have access to the kind of education that works for you and your kids. Um, and I think the, the big lesson I took from that um, was that uh, there are a lot of people in Massachusetts who, uh, who worry about the financing issue. And, and that's certainly something we have to consider. But my big issue is that was about nine communities that had reached the cap, which meant that in nine communities in Massachusetts, charter schools were very popular with uh, the people in those communities. And we need to continue to work on programs and opportunities to improve the quality of schools everywhere. We've been very aggressive about supporting our vocational and technical schools. Um, I think we need to, to work with our colleagues in local government around leadership programs because up in Lawrence, certainly Jeff Riley has proven that uh, leadership can be a big issue with respect to success in urban education, longer school days. And, uh, and, and I also think we need to take a look at some of the stuff like the uh, opportunity zones that they're doing in Springfield in their middle schools, which team, seem to be pretty successful. Well, we know from past experience that the Mass Massachusetts Teachers Association, the largest teacher union, hates charter schools, sees them as an existential threat, wants them gone if they could. Uh, they've, uh, they've never cooperated with the concept of charter schools and have seized every opportunity they could to get rid of them. Are they now emboldened to push that envelope further, in your view? Well, again, I think there are a lot of people in Massachusetts, about 40,000 kids in charter schools, whose families are very, very happy with them. And, uh, and this ballot question was about nine communities uh, where the cap had been reached. Um, but if the voters don't really care or don't care enough and uh, they're willing to back the teacher unions on this, why wouldn't they back them on going even further? Well, I think it would be very difficult for people to take away something that's worked so well for so many kids in, in cities around the Commonwealth. I mean, the, between the graduation rates and the success rates and the, and, the, uh, and, the, and the performance of a lot of these schools and the kids that are in them, 
on some of our standardized testing demonstrates that uh, for a lot of kids, they work. And, uh, and I would certainly fight any attempt to take those opportunities away from people. And I know there are a lot of people on Beacon Hill who would join me on that one. Um, but I certainly think that uh, the lesson I took from that whole thing is we need to come up with some other strategies to help improve the schools, period, especially in, uh, in our urban centers. All right. On that note, we'll take a quick break. And when we continue, more with the governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with Governor Charlie Baker, the governor of Massachusetts. And one more th quick thing on education, then I want to get into some other topics with you, Governor. Uh, uh, as we were taping this prior to the holiday, uh, President-elect Trump had just appointed Betsy DeVos. Is that the correct pronunciation of Michigan, a longtime charter school and school choice advocate as Secretary of Education. What role would you like to see the federal government playing in the charter school and education reform movements here in Massachusetts going forward? Well, I don't know that much about Betsy, um, but if you think about John King, who's the current Secretary of Education under Barack Obama, he started one of the charter schools here in Boston. He's uh, very interested in uh, urban education, always has been. Arnie Duncan, who was the previous Secretary of Education under President Obama, was a the superintendent of schools in the city of Chicago. I mean, these are... Yeah, they, these talk, are, they talked a big game, but what did they deliver to us, for instance? Well, they did manage, um, through the Race to the Top program, to create a pretty big incentive for states like ours, and we did, to expand the cap that we had at that point in time on charter schools in Massachusetts. I mean, my guess is that she will focus on uh, on urban education because that has been where most of the folks um, who are interested in the reform movement spend most of their time and frankly it's probably where the best opportunity is. I mean if you think about Massachusetts um, our suburban schools are among the very best in the country and we have a bunch of terrific schools in our cities as well but everybody I think would agree that uh, the place where we need to do more is probably in the cities and my guess is that's where they'll come at it uh, at the federal level as well. All right let's let's squeeze in a couple of questions about transportation here. I understand that there's some progress uh, that you're going to be announcing this coming week about uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, ride share tra transportation TNCs. Yeah. TNCs. yeah, another acronym for me to try yeah. to remember. Oh, uh, what's up? This is the Uber and Lyft stuff. Right. Um, well, we started talking to them right after the new legislation passed, which created safety standards and insurance standards and um, and, and sort of market leveling standards between background Uber checks and on Lyft drivers, and all that cabs. stuff. Yeah. And um, and the good news is we've signed an MOU or we will be signing an MOU and then go memorandum ahead. of understanding for you Sorry. acronym fans, uh, an agreement with uh, with the folks that are in that space, which will dramatically speed up the process of doing the background checks and getting them all done so that uh, over the course of the next few months, we'll be able to process all the drivers that are Uber and Lyft drivers through that background check process um, and then weed out ones we need to weed out based on the standards and it, it, it is in fact in some respects the most comprehensive standard for this in the country and the good news is it will happen a lot faster than it might have otherwise hmm. which is a good thing. Are you going to apply the same approach to the marijuana merchants? Um, you know, we've had some conversations with uh, with folks on the uh, legislative side about this, and they've had some conversations with um, with the with the yes folks, and even people who supported the yes thing said the legislation uh, had some warts in it that probably needed to be fixed, and and we're looking forward to hearing from the legislature, from others, on what they want to do there. Well, for most of our viewers, the big transportation story continues to be the MBTA yep. and its reliability or lack of it. I'm seeing all this pushback by the Carmen's Union. Uh, Mayor Walsh was a lead speaker at one of their uh, recent rallies, pushing back on uh, your uh, privatization efforts. Uh, is the legislature still behind you, or do you have concerns about the politics of all this? I think the legislature has seen a lot of progress. I mean, many of the leaders in the legislature have seen, they've, have told me, they've seen more progress in the past couple of years on reforming some of what I would call just the outdated practices of the T than they saw at any time previously. And um, despite all the noise, we actually have a pretty good working relationship with um, most of the unions there, including the Carmen's Union. And two other things for your folks to know. Number one, there are more bus drivers working today at the T than there were when the Fiscal and Management Control Board got started. You Union never know. Union bus drivers. Union bus drivers. You never know that to just follow the news in the, in the, in the media. But we've also, uh, through mostly modernizing and reforming 
corporate operations of the T, we've probably saved about $60 million on the operation side. And, and our goal going forward here is big investments in the core system, big investments in what I would call the stuff that people will notice and, uh, and reforms of the way the place operates. And I think, frankly, I think that's exactly what the public's looking for there. All right, Governor, good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming Appreciate by. It. Come yep. again soon. Appreciate having you. That's Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts. And that's it for me. Have a great rest of the holiday weekend. Now back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.